Thanks for uh, Uh, so thanks uh, Scholar Gate uh, to host me uh, for uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, to uh, present uh, a few uh, presentation about uh, babysitting your well using a sterilizing technique. Uh, so welcome everybody and I uh, hope you are uh, safe and uh, I hope you get the benefit uh, from uh, these insights uh, about uh, sterilizing. So our agenda today will be uh, composed of five parts. The first part will be a well stimulation objective. So why we uh, perform a well stimulation techniques. Uh, second part, we will uh, go through some uh, uh, common formation damage types. Then we will uh, introduce matrix acidizing workflow. We will talk about some challenges in applying uh, uh, stimulation. Then we will end up with a case study. So what is mean by concept of babysitting your well? Uh, babysitting your well mean uh, to diagnose your, uh, your problem uh, of uh, well, uh, then you try to figure out how to solve this problem. So as a petroleum engineer, we have this uh, productivity index equation, which relate uh, production flow rate uh, uh, by uh, uh, production flow rate is equal to uh, permeability multiplied by the net uh, base thickness of the reservoir multiplied by the drawdown of, uh, of uh, the formation, which is uh, average of our pressure minus a bottom hole for longer pressure, divided by uh, oil properties like viscosity and the initial formation volume factor, multiplied by lean RE uh, divided by RW, which is uh, the oil per radius, uh, plus scan. So as a petroleum engineer, we have two parameters here uh, to control uh, the productivity for the oil. The first parameter is the scan, and the second parameter is the bottom hole flow longer pressure. So if you want to increase your uh, flow rate, so you want to decrease the scan, and this is the scope of well stimulation techniques. And if you want also to increase the flow rate, you should uh, reduce your bottom hole flow longer pressure, and this is the scope of artificial lift method. So <clears throat> what is the well stimulation objective? We have two objectives uh, in well stimulation. Uh, first one is to restore formation flow capacity. This is occurred by uh, removing formation damage uh, in the vicinity of the new wheel bore area. Uh, this include the wheel bore clean up and matrix uh, acidizing or matrix treatment. Uh, and usually injection of the treating fluid in uh, this objective will be below the formation fraction pressure. So we inject, we inject into the matrix and don't affect uh, the formation itself. The second objective is to create new flow capacity by increasing the area uh, that connected to the reservoir uh, by a highly conductive uh, flow channel. <clears throat> uh, this is called the uh, probed frac or acid frac, and usually the injection of the treating fluid will be above the formation fraction pressure. So we frac the, the, uh, the formation itself uh, to increase the area connected to the reservoir. So usually what is the wheel stimulation impact on production? Uh, wheel stimulation has a great impact on production if it is designed and executed properly on the right candle well. So usually if you put your well in production with time, the production rate is declining by exponential or hyperbolic or, uh, or, so, or harmonic decline. So you decide to uh, make a stimulation job. So this is at an extra production for your well. So then uh, the production rate is declining again. So what you gain is this uh, area, which is added reserve to your uh, reserve uh, of, the, of the reservoir. So what is the common uh, well stimulation techniques we have? We have uh, uh, five or uh, six techniques. Uh, the first one is well book clean out. This is include uh, tubing clean out and the perforation wash. So the objective is the wheelbarrow clean out is to remove the flow restriction in the wheelbarrow. Uh, this includes organic deposition like asphaltine or paraffin and the scales. So the location of, dam of damage is in tubing, uh, perf and compilation. So uh, the damage is not in uh, the formation itself. Uh, usually typical volume for perforation wash, uh, uh, 20 gallon per foot. And usually this treatment is circulated uh, uh, in the well, not injected into the formation. This is only treatment inside the well bore itself. Then we have a second type, matrix acidizing. 
matrix. So what is the objective of mat matrix acidizing? It's to put the salt component, dwelling solid, uh, precipitate, clays, and formation damage to improve well uh, formation connectivity. Uh, usually the, the damage uh, that happen in the, for in the formation happen in a new well bore area, uh, usually uh, less than one meter depth of damage uh, from sand phase. And we use the typical volume, uh, 50 to 200 gallon per foot for matrix acidizing. And usually this is uh, a treatment, uh, the small volume treatment injected below fat pressure. So we, we, we inject the fluid uh, below fat pressure uh, and uh, uh, below uh, the fat pressure because we, we just need to uh, treat uh, the new wheel area only. We have also other matrix treatment like solvent and surfactant. This depends on the type of the damage. Uh, this damage attributable to uh, emulsion, rotability change, organic deposit like asphaltine or paraffin, or scales. So this uh, uh, this treatment depends on the type of, uh, of the formation damage itself, and usually it uh, the damage is new well bore area less than one meter depth from sand phase, and for scale it is usually at depth less than ten meter uh, from sand phase. So uh, this uh, treatment also is uh, injected below the fat pressure, and usually a large volume return with produced fluid uh, uh, with uh, the scale inhibitor. Uh, last technique is acid fracturing. Uh, the objective of acid fracturing is to create long conductive uh, channels. Uh, this technique used in low bearing metal reservoir. Uh, the location uh, of uh, acid fracturing the treatment uh, it's usually uh, deep into the formation. Uh, we can have a fracture half length greater than 100 foot, and the usually typical volume from 1,000 to 3,000 gallon per foot. And this is large volume treatment injected above the frag pressure, uh, pressure gradient. So we have matrix acidizing. So what is uh, the matrix acidizing? Uh, matrix acidizing is accomplished by injecting acid to the soil uh, or disperse material that impair well productivity. This is usually in sandstone. Uh, and the carbonate will usually uh, create a new unburied flow channels called wormholes. So in sandstone, we have objective to solve uh, the unburied material of wind productivity. And in carbonate, we usually uh, create the new buses. Uh, this new bus is called wormholes. And in the matrix acidizing, we should emphasize that the fluids are injected below the fraction pressure of the formation. So this is in sandstone, we have uh, this is the sand grain itself, what is grain, and we have in uh, clays. This is called the clay filling uh, uh, booths. And we have here uh, bull lining clay like uh, kilonite and the light. And uh, here we have some impairment due to the, the damage. So the, the objective of sandstone acidizing here is to remove the clay and the impairment of uh, the formation damage. So we, will, we want to, the, uh, the reservoir to be like this. Uh, we have a much bore, uh, much bore area. Uh, to uh, flow the, the oil. In acid, uh, carbonate acidizing, we, we will end up with, uh, uh, with wormholes, which increase the conductivity uh, of uh, the formation to the oil pool, uh, and uh, any damage can be dissolved in a wormhole itself. So because we, we deal with matrix, we deal with all the critical matrix, so critical matrix is the new willbow area region. Usually it's uh, from uh, uh, three to five feet from sand face. And usually this area, uh, most of the pressure drop happen in the reservoir happen in this area. So this is uh, the pressure profile along the radius of uh, the reservoir. So this is your well, and this is your RW, and this is your RE, the drainage radius, where you have your reservoir pressure. So as you move from the reservoir to the willbow, the pressure is uh, dropped and the decline. Until you reach three or five feet from sand face, uh, the pressure drop uh, is, uh, is the most. Uh, so if you have uh, uh, undamaged reservoir, so you should supposed to be at P2 at the well pool. Uh, and if you have uh, damage, so you can be at uh, If you don't have any damage, and this is uh, the relation between the permeability of damage zone and the, uh, the, the version zone. Uh, so uh, uh, this is the ideal uh, this is the ideal shape, which is the circular. We have uh, depths of damage RD and the KD, and we have here uh, the K of the formation. Uh, 
Uh, but uh, usually due to the heterogeneities of vulnerabilities, we, we have uh, actual shape maybe like that. So we have uh, uh, to consider as the damage by uh, what is called the skin factor. So a skin factor is a way to present the damage in the reservoir. Uh, is a dimensionless parameter uh, that account for additional pressure drop uh, due to the damage. Uh, and we have what's called the Hawkins uh, formula to represent this, uh, uh, this damage. Uh, so, uh, if your skin, skin is equal to zero, this means that you don't have the damage or formation, uh, and uh, uh, the formation is neutral. So, as uh, the contrast between uh, the version uh, permeability and uh, the damage permeability increased, as we see, the skin is increased. So uh, K, uh, K divided by KD is equal to, uh, this will give us some uh, skin of equal to five. And as you increase this contrast, you will end up with high skin. Another way to represent uh, the damage, uh, what's called the apparent willbow radius. Uh, this is the relation uh, of uh, willbow radius with uh, skin. So apparent willbow radius is equal to uh, willbow radius exponential minus S. Uh, so if you have S positive, this will be negative. So you, your apparent will be radius will be less than the, the will be radius. And if this skin is negative, which means that you stimulated your will, so this term will be positive and your apparent will be radius will be greater than your, uh, your actual will be radius. So how we, we diagnose our will uh, for a possible candidate for stimulation, we usually have uh, four common evaluation tools. We have pressure transit analysis to, uh, to get the skin. We have production bubble map. We have uh, a, a way to review our well history and to see what is corresponding events. And finally, we have production logging technique. So what is pressure transit analysis? Uh, usually we use a pressure built up uh, to, de to determine uh, the value of the skin factor. Uh, how we can uh, make as a build up, usually the well is producing for a sufficient uh, time, uh, TB, which is uh, producing time. Then we shut in uh, and observe the build up pressure. Uh, so this is a typical sequence of operation. So we, we have a constant uh, production rate. Then we shut in the well at uh, time zero and we build up uh, the pressure. And this is the pressure. We pressure decreased with production. Then we stop production and build up. So the pressure is increased. So by semi-log analysis and log-log analysis, uh, uh, this is uh, used by uh, well test engineer, as they can drive from semi-log analysis and log-log analysis as a skin factor by using a uh, Horner equation for, uh, to determine permeability and then to determine the skin factor. So if you, uh, your skin is positive, so that means that uh, your well is damaged. Uh, if this uh, skin is negative, that means that your well is stimulated. Another way to, to diagnose our well uh, is bubble map production ma uh, map. Uh, so bubble map usually is the first step uh, of field production surveillance to know which wells that uh, are not uh, performing well. Uh, we usually uh, plot uh, the wells as a cumulative uh, oil production for wells. So this bubble means the cumulative uh, production of the well. So the greater the bubble, uh, the greater the production rate. And here we have some small bubbles like uh, this orange one, that means that the cumulative oil production is uh, lower than uh, the others. Uh, so that means that maybe this will suffer from a problem and we need to uh, revisit this well and see what is the problem of this well. And also we can plot a specific productivity index, which is uh, parallel per PSI per foot for each well and to see uh, uh, which wells are suffering from low productivity. So this is another way for diagnosing our wells. Uh, third way is to review the well production history and uh, see what happening uh, in this uh, event. So by monitoring well performance with any variable like daily oil, oil production, productivity index, water cut, and GUR, we can identify changes in the performance. So usually formation damage is occurred after some events like uh, well killing operation, workover operation, injection of unfiltrated brines, no over into injection wells. So here is the, the graph of uh, the oil productivity. Uh, this uh, green color is uh, the oil production and the blue, blue dot is uh, water cut. So as we see the, the, the production is stable in this period, then decrease suddenly 
and the water count uh, in contrast increased suddenly. So this operation, uh, when we review uh, the events that happened in this uh, in this uh, time, so we found that uh, the well uh, had some uh, cleaning operation using uh, sandy cleaning operation using oil based mud. So uh, this caused also uh, from this uh, graph uh, oil production to decrease and uh, water cut uh, increase due to uh, we have the uh, wettability change issue. So we should uh, uh, propose uh, some stimulation for this well. Uh, the last way to diagnose our well is production logging. So by production logging, we can identify a zone with uh, damage. So suppose this is gamma ray and we have here uh, three zones. And this is uh, the PLT. Uh, this is the measured flow rate. And as we see uh, here in this zone, there is no flow because there is no uh, measured flow rate in this region. Then we have in, uh, here flow in the second zone and the first zone we have a flow. So this may uh, be a zone of damage. So we can investigate the problem here. So we should review our, our well record and uh, we make some lab tests to determine the damage. And we can make also what's called scanning electron uh, uh, microscope to confirm the damage type. So this is lead, uh, will uh, lead us to the second part of the, version, uh, the presentation about the formation uh, damage type. So what is the formation damage? Uh, so formation damage concerns of the formation of volume of rock with reduced permeability in the new Wilbur region. Uh, the processes that happen uh, uh, that lead to formation damage act as a direction of flow due to either uh, physical blockage or reduction in size of the bore throat itself or reduction in oil permeability or uh, relative oil permeability due to uh, adverse formation with ability changes like in this example. So this, uh, in this uh, example, we have a wettability change. So the, the oil itself is increasing and the water cut increasing. Uh, also, a uh, phase change in uh, producing fluid. You may have gases or some water. This also uh, make uh, the, oil product, uh, the oil relative permeability uh, to decrease. And these two effects are maximized when we have a high flow rate due to a turbulent component in the skin. As a general rule, uh, avoiding damage is much easier than to deal with it. So if you make your operation as standard, uh, at standard guidelines, uh, you will reduce the damage that happened to the well, uh, usually uh, because avoiding damage is much easier than uh, to deal with it. So we have here two types of uh, formation type, uh, types, uh, formation damage. We have natural and we have induced. Natural include fine migration, Swelling clay, water from scale, organic deposit, uh, asphaltine paraffin, mixed deposit uh, from uh, organic and uh, and water, uh, and uh, scales, and we have also emulsion as a natural formation damage. We have induced like solid plugging with ability change due to uh, invasion of oil based mud, acid action, acid byproduct uh, itself, iron precipitation, uh, sludge that uh, catalyzed by iron and bacteria and water blocks. So this is the common formation damage types. Uh, so uh, the sources of formation damage, usually uh, in each phase of the well, we have the formation damage. So in drilling operation, we have some formation damage. Cementing itself causes some damage to the formation, perforation itself, compilation fluids. Gravel backing usually uh, induce some damage to the wall. Uh, stimulation itself can cause some damage if it uh, not uh, designed and executed uh, in the right way. Work over operation also induce some damage and production uh, uh, and the injection also causes some uh, formation damage. So this is the common uh, method uh, mechanisms for formation damage. Uh, the first one is water block. What is meant by water block is to increase uh, the saturation of water in the, the new world area. So what happens if you increase the situation of the, the new Wilbur region? Uh, so if you increase your, uh, your initial situation from 20 to 35, so in the, in the graph of the oil relative permeability, the relative oil permeability is decreased from 90% to almost uh, 30%. So you decrease uh, uh, the ability of the rock to uh, flow the oil. Second uh, mechanism is oil-based uh, mud invasion. So if you have a reservoir that uh, uh, you have a gas flow, so uh, if there is no damage, the gas can flow easily through the bore throat itself. Uh, 
So when you you uh, you drilled uh, with oil based mud, you uh, you uh, induced some damage by the oil droplet of the oil based mud, and this uh, oil droplet impedes the gas flow. So you reduce uh, the relative mobility to the gas. Third uh, common mechanism is emulsion. So if uh, the reservoir performs the damage containing oil flow, so if you add some surfactant, surfactant usually cause emulsion between oil and uh, and the uh, water, and this uh, emulsion has high viscosity for the oil. So this means that the pressure drop will be uh, as uh, as much as high because due to uh, the viscosity increase. So this is uh, the mechanism of emulsion. Also, if uh, you use a fork containing a, a clay layer, uh, depending on the time of the clay. So if you enter any uh, incompatible fluid to your reservoir, you can have uh, clay swelling. So you, uh, this is uh, the layer of the clay. So it is swelled and uh, decreases uh, the both throat of uh, the fluid. So now you have uh, uh, less permeability to the oil to, to flow. Finally, uh, we have uh, the last mechanism is fine migration. So usually in uh, 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 in oil reservoir, we have uh, uh, a water wet uh, film uh, uh, around the grains, and this film usually contain uh, uh, fine uh, fine like uh, clays like kaolinite. Uh, so if you produce your water, uh, you you make this uh, you make this uh, water uh, mobile, and you make uh, these fines to migrate uh, along the flow path into the reservoir uh, into the new whirlpool region. And this can uh, bridge across uh, the both road and decrease the permeability to the oil. So uh, usually acid is uh, not uh, the, mag the magic uh, solution. Uh, so you should know the type of uh, the damage uh, and uh, depend on the type of the damage, you will select the proper uh, treatment. So if you have problem of emulsion, usually a mutual solvent and demulsifier uses with this damage. If you have mutability change, you can use mutual solvent uh, and water wetting surfactant to, to make the rock water wet. If you have a water block problem in oil well, we usually use acid, uh, acid plus uh, solvent or surfactant. If we have a gas well, we use acid and uh, alcohols. Uh, if we have a scale, depend on the type of scale. If you have carbonate, you can use acid. If you have sulfate, you will use what's called edita. Uh, this is a chelating agent. If you have the scales, you can use uh, HSDL with, uh, with reducing agent. If you have chloride, only uh, water is enough. If you have hydroxid, uh, this can be treated with HCl. If you have silica, we use what's called the mud acid. It's a mixture of HCl and HF. If you have organic uh, deposit, we can use aromatic solvent to, to, uh, to solve the damage. If you have a uh, mixed uh, deposit, uh, organic and inorganic, we can use solvent and acid. If you have silt and the clay, this depends on uh, the mineralogy of the, the clay and the silt, and usually use uh, mud acid with them. So it depends on uh, the type of damage, we can select uh, the best solvent to do this damage. So we, usually we don't use uh, acid as absolute uh, solution for uh, all types. Uh, we customize acid only for certain cases. So usually what is the matrix acidizing uh, workflow? So this is the typical uh, acidizing workflow. Uh, first thing, we identify potential uh, stimulation candidates. Then we uh, evaluate uh, some economics uh, to know uh, is it economic to perform uh, acid stimulation or matrix acidizing to the well. Uh, then we uh, go to uh, uh, this option, matrix as stimulation suitable. If it's suitable, uh, we can identify formation uh, damage type and location to, defy, to know uh, which stimulation technique we will use. Then we select the treatment fluid uh, and the composition additive uh, volume based on the damage type and location. Uh, then if we, uh, we uh, mineralogy of, uh, the rock itself, we select uh, the diversion technique and the uh, specify injection rate and the pressure. Uh, then we execute uh, the job as a uh, bare program. Uh, then we return the well to production. Then we evaluate, uh, evaluate uh, the treatment success. So if we have uh, some problem, we can modify the stimulation and uh, in the next well, we can modify the program itself. So the first uh, part is candidate selection. Uh, usually this is the minimum screening uh, criteria for acid uh, stimulation candidate. So you should have a hydrocarbon saturation uh, greater than 40% for oil reservoir. 
and for gas reservoir, you should have uh, gas saturation greater than 50%. Then we have uh, water cut uh, should be less than 30% uh, in oil reservoir, and in gas reservoir, it should be less than uh, 200 barrel uh, per million uh, standard cubic feet for Russian. And for oil reservoir to perform matrix acidizing, it should have permeability uh, greater than 20 millidoxy. And for gas reservoir, it's okay with permeability uh, greater than uh, 1 millidoxy. Uh, another thing, uh, reservoir pressure. So if you have a depletion less than 70%, you can perform uh, acid uh, matrix acidizing. If the depletion is high, we can to go to uh, matrix acidizing. Uh, for gas reservoir, reservoir pressure should be twice uh, abundant pressure. Uh, to perform acid the job. Uh, the last thing is production system should have um, uh, a space for our uh, incremental increasing of production. So at least it should have 20% uh, as a spare capacity. So, uh, this can, so this criteria includes the remaining reserve by knowing the hydrocarbon saturation and uh, by, uh, uh, by knowing the permeability and the super pressure, uh, this uh, will uh, this considered as a willing flow productivity and also facilities uh, to have uh, uh, greater than 20% as a spare uh, production. So this is a table include uh, that uh, the cases that not cut uh, candidate at all for performing acid job. So this include the gas wells with uh, a water cut uh, greater than 20 barrel uh, liquid uh, uh, per million standard cubic feet. Uh, and this three phase production, you have the oil and gas and water in your production. So, this is case the most uh, candidate for acid. Uh, possible cause for it may be a uh, poor tubing design. Uh, second case is gas well with high drawdown. This causes uh, turbulent, uh, turbulent flow. So, this is called non Darcy effect. So, this is not candidate for uh, uh, a stimulation job. Uh, also, oil well that produces uh, 20 barrel greater than 20 barrel per foot. This is usually uh, cause uh, turbulent flow. Also, oil wells greater than five barrels per day per birth. This is also a completion of geometrical scan, not a formation damage scan. Also, partial uh, penetration as of well, uh, can have some positive scan, but this is not a candidate for. Uh, a, a stimulation job because it is a geometric scale. So after we make our candidate selection, then we go to the uh, laboratory identification and treatment selection. Uh, usually lab test include formation mineralogy. We can know the mineralogy of the formation by uh, co-analysis and the XRD. We can know from the XRD uh, how much uh, carbonate, how much quartz, how much clay uh, from the XRD analysis. And also we have the uh, same and the uh, thin section we don't know uh, which type of bust we have. So in this uh, photo, we have a natural fracture uh, in a blue uh, line. So we should know uh, the formation mineralogy and the bust. Then we have uh, acid solubility test. So usually we, we uh, made the solubility test to, to confirm the XRD result. So from acid solubility test, we know the formation material. Uh, so we use uh, this information with XRD to know the carbonate content, uh, salt and the total clay and the uh, active clay using uh, solubility with HCl and mud acid. Uh, second, to identify the scale type with acid solubility. Uh, so we use uh, solubility to determine the best solvent for scale uh, removal. And as we said, usually acid is, uh, is not uh, the magic solution for everything. So we, we make uh, solubility with acid chelating uh, agent under st simulated well condition of pressure and tem uh, temperature uh, to determine the optimum uh, treatment. Uh, the last thing is organic deposit. We use a uh, xylene or tubine uh, to dissolve the, uh, the organic deposit like asphaltine and this picture asphaltine and the paraffin. Usually also we make this test with mutual solvent and uh, alcohols to remove uh, the organic deposit. So we make uh, this test to confirm the, 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 the damage type and the mineralogy of the formation. And this is the common uh, minerals that we, we have in our reservoir. We have quartz, feldspar, mica, clay, carbonate, sulfate, and other. Uh, usually uh, we make uh, each mineral has uh, some solubility in HCl and HF. So in general, quartz don't dissolve in HCl. Feldspar also don't dissolve in HCl. 
only uh, carbonate and uh, and sulfate and the halide and iron oxide dissolved in HCl and uh, for HF which is hydrofluoric acid usually feldspar and the clays are dissolved in uh, in HF so uh, depend on the mineral we can use the, the, the suitable acid for this uh, mineral to dissolve it then we have uh, to uh, to uh, to make uh, some formation fluid analysis. So we make analysis uh, for water to predict if uh, this water can make uh, some scale. Uh, this depends on uh, the cation and the anion in the water itself. And we make uh, some tests in oil, like incompatibility uh, test uh, with uh, the treatment fluid, uh, the API sludge uh, tendency test, asphaltene content of the oil and the paraffin content of the oil to, see, to, uh, to choose uh, the best way uh, to treat the asphaltene and the uh, paraffin. Then we simulate uh, what uh, the treatment, uh, uh, we simulate the treatment itself by uh, core flood test. Usually this is uh, mimic uh, the treatment itself uh, and we see the effect of the treatment on the permeability of the core. Uh, so usually we inject uh, the different treatment fluid and observe uh, the permeability. Uh, to know uh, how much permeability build reduction can be uh, happened due to a certain treatment or increase in uh, permeability due to a certain uh, treatment. And usually this uh, rates uh, from 0.2 to 1 uh, cc per minute and the pressure range for uh, up to uh, 1,500 psi. Uh, another way to know the weightability of the formation and use uh, the metaphysical analysis so you should know uh, the weightability of the rock. So if your contact angle less than uh, 90, this is uh, water weight reservoir. Uh, so uh, if it's uh, greater than, uh, uh, contact angle is greater than 90, this is oil weight reservoir. Uh, between uh, 80 and 100, it's difficult to determine the weightability. So if you deal with oil weight reservoir, you should, uh, this will affect the treatment design. Uh, if you treat, uh, if you deal with the water water so far, also this affects the treatment design. So you should know so uh, you should know the weightability well. Also, the positive we have two techniques to know the positive from the first analysis or from the core. We have effective uh, positive, uh, and we use uh, boil law uh, from uh, the core analysis to to determine the effective positive, and we have also total positive from bulk density measurement. Then we have uh, permeability to determine from uh, the core analysis. Uh, this is uh, happen usually by nitrogen or liquid uh, under confining the stress and the downhole temperature to determine the permeability of the rock. And again, uh, avoiding the damage is much easier than uh, dealing with it. So you should remember this uh, all uh, very well. <coughs> So uh, then after we uh, identify our candidate and uh, make our lab test, uh, then we will go to uh, treatment load selection. So we have here as well, the first step acid type, we have HCl, we have organic acid, we have mud acid. So in HCl, this is dissolved carbonate. So if your minerals uh, uh, from XRD show that you have carbonate, uh, so you, you should use HCl. Uh, usually concentration of HCl uh, up to 28% uh, uh, of weight. And uh, the disadvantages of HCl is that is highly corrosive. So we, we should use some additive uh, to make it less uh, corrosive. Then we another type of acid is organic and this includes acetic acid and formic acid. Uh, usually they are weaker acid uh, than HCl, but they use the for high temperature wells and uh, the advantage of them is that is, uh, they don't need the uh, corrosion inhibitor because they are uh, non-corrosive. Then we have uh, mud acid. So if you have uh, in your XRD and solubility that you have clay and the quartz, we use uh, mud acid. Mud acid, we have two types, folate trans mud acid. It's 12% uh, uh, HCl and 3% HF. Then we have half strength mud acid. It's 6% uh, HCl and 1.5% uh, HF. So depend on the clay content and the quartz content, we, 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 which we select between full strength and half strength. And we have some guidelines for, uh, uh, for this treatment. Uh, second is uh, acid uh, composition. Uh, so depend on the mineralogy and the solubility test, we can uh, we, we have some guidelines to use, to use uh, which acid. So if we have HCl solubility greater than 15%, we use HCl only. We don't use uh, uh, HF, even with sandstone acidizing. 
Invisibility is good because in Elizabethine, uh, we use uh, HCL uh, for uh, as a reflush in sandstone acidizing. Uh, if we have a high permeability, so we should know our permeability from uh, the core analysis. Uh, so if we have a high permeability uh, greater than 100 millidarsi, this is also depend on how much we have uh, qualities and clay and fillers bar. So this is all these guidelines. Uh, to determine which uh, treatment is suitable for our case. And also, if we have uh, low permeability less than 100 millidarsi, and uh, we have different terminology, so uh, these uh, guidelines uh, show us which uh, fluid uh, system is suitable. So in treatment also, we, we add uh, some additive uh, with uh, certain uh, uh, function. So usually we have families like inhibitor, surfactant, foaming agent, uh, mutual solvent, non-emulsifier, iron control, friction inducer, clay control, anti-sludge uh, agent, and finally diverter. So all of this uh, additive, uh, each one has uh, its function, and you should know what is the function of uh, each additive. So usually the general function are to prevent excessive corrosion by corrosion inhibitor, to prevent sludging, to prevent emulsions, uh, uh, emulsions to prevent iron precipitation, to improve the coverage of uh, the uh, coverage of the zone treatment, to improve cleanup during flowback, to prevent uh, reaction product precipitation, to stabilize clay, to disperse paraffin and asphaltine. So all of this uh, function, uh, <clears throat> you should use active uh, wisely and for a reason. So uh, usually we, we use inhibitor because we if we use HCL, if we use acetic, we can we don't use the inhibitor, so it is uh, costless. Uh, costless meaning if you use inhibitor with uh, acetic or formic, so you should uh, know what is the function of the inhibitor, uh, and uh, and the certain in uh, and each add you should know its function its function uh, to add it uh, with a, with a percentage to uh, to to reach the function well. So you have to balance between uh, the additive. Uh, so uh, because the additive uh, could have a, a positive effect like damage removal, and we can have a negative effect like uh, the consolidation of the sand due to we dissolve the carbonate cementing material. So we have the consolidation, and we can also make uh, some fine uh, migration due to a uh, solution of, uh, of, uh, of the cementing material. So we should balance between the positive effect and the negative effect in our treatment. <clears throat> uh, the fourth step in, uh, in our workflow is to select the treatment volume and selection of the uh, injection rate. Uh, usually treatment volume, uh, we select it based on the permeability and the temperature. So if we have a permeability less than uh, 20 millidarsi, we can use uh, uh, 100 gallon per foot. Uh, at a temperature less than uh, 100, uh, 150 Fahrenheit. And if we have greater temperature, we, we use uh, less quantities uh, of, uh, of acid. Uh, so this is uh, table contain all uh, the possible permeabilities that we have in our reservoir and these are the proposed uh, volumes for each uh, condition. Then we have a selection of injection rate, and as we said before, that we should uh, inject the treatment below the fracture uh, gradient. Uh, so we use uh, the fracture gradient here as a constraint of uh, of our rate. So we should uh, uh, so the rate should be less than the rate that causes uh, a fracture. So we use uh, the fracture gradient in this uh, uh, in this equation to constrain our uh, injection rate. Uh, and also, we have uh, we make uh, some uh, cool follow-up test uh, for carbonate to know uh, which volume, uh, which uh, which injection rate is uh, suitable uh, to perform a warm hold. And this is the relation between uh, uh, volume to breakthrough and the injection rate. And usually, the minimum uh, point. Uh, this uh, this is the most uh, preferred warm hold uh, figure. Uh, so you want to inject at uh, this rate. Uh, to make uh, this wormhole uh, wide uh, as this uh, picture. So what is the challenge uh, with us when performing acid job? As the first challenge is to choose the right candidate. Uh, we can uh, choose uh, any candidate, but, uh, but the right candidate is that uh, will give us uh, more production. So this is uh, the biggest challenge. 
Uh, second, the challenge is to design uh, for the optimum treatment. So uh, you should uh, make all the lab tests to, to know which uh, type of treatment you need. Uh, third, the challenge is uh, choosing the optimum diverter uh, to, to make all zone uh, taking the asset. So this is also considered uh, the main uh, challenge in, uh, in asset itself. Uh, fourth uh, challenge is to know the, the current fracture gradient. And usually this information is uh, absent. Uh, so we, we use our best estimate for fracture uh, gradient estimate to choose uh, the injection rate. Uh, the, five, uh, the fifth uh, challenge is to know uh, uh, where your acid is go. Uh, so this is knowing the intake uh, during bumping. So this is the biggest uh, challenge we have during the injection. And finally, we have uh, to quality control and quality assurance due, uh, during the job execution itself. Uh, to have a, a, a good result of uh, the job. So the, let's go to the, the last part, which is a case study. Uh, so the problem here, uh, the well was drilled and completed on a carbonate formation. Uh, after the perforation, we don't have any, uh, any flow. Uh, we're trying to lift the well with nitrogen, uh, the, uh, also no flow. And this is uh, the trajectory of the well. So we can, we we have uh, in this well we have uh, uh, the physical analysis shows that SCW uh, is almost 20 percent, which make it uh, candidate uh, uh, because we have a reserve here, and the post was 20, uh, uh, 25 percent, and the net pay thickness is uh, 60 meter, and we have a permeability uh, from 30 to 40 millidarcy. Uh, and we also have image uh, for our carbonate. So we have uh, from this image, we have uh, natural fracture and the uh, semi-open. That means that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the have a conductive material. Uh, so based on this, uh, uh, on this output of physical and the image data, uh, we decide to perform acid uh, stimulation job uh, to remove uh, the drilling and cementing damage. Uh, so we go to the lab test and they make XRD result. And as we see, XRD result shows that the calcite percentage uh, is uh, almost in the first about uh, 30%, and we have quarters at 10%. Uh, and in the lower zone, we have uh, calcite percent, uh, it's uh, 51%, and quarters of uh, 17%. And we made the solubility test for the two zones. And because we have local site in the first zone, we have low solubility. So solubility was uh, 45, uh, 45%. And in the lower zone, because we have local site, we have more uh, solubility, it's five, 55%. So we go to HCL uh, treatment. Uh, so we design volume based on the gap between uh, uh, gallon per foot and the porosity and the temperature. And from the, uh, this graph, we choose uh, uh, 100 gallon per foot uh, for our asset. Uh, and usually acid, uh, uh, typical, dose, uh, typical volumes are from uh, 50 to uh, 20. Uh, and you choose uh, based on your porosity and your depth of damage. And this is a typical sequence. And as we have uh, natural structure, we, we decided to use uh, two stage uh, diverter and uh, three stages of acid. Uh, uh, <clears throat> then we we need to determine our uh, fracture gradient uh, to determine our uh, design rate. So uh, due to uh, we don't have uh, any sonic data to determine the fracture gradients, so we use our best estimate. And uh, knowing that uh, this area is normal faulting regime, so we use uh, 0.65 uh, base side per foot as the fracture gradient. Uh, and based on this fracture gradient, we design our rate. So uh, the rate the max is uh, uh, to be below uh, the fracture gradient is uh, 1.5 pared per minute. <clears throat> uh, uh, fifth uh, 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 step in, uh, in our uh, workflow is the job execution. Uh, and because we deal with the 60 meter or 50 meter interval, so we decided to make it uh, by uh, volt U. So uh, what is uh, the advantage of cold tube? It's uh, usually uh, used as a mechanical diverter uh, uh, that will lead uh, the chemical diverter of, uh, of uh, what is we use here to chemical diverter. So uh, using uh, cold tube with, uh, with the chemical diverter uh, give us a better zonal coverage. Uh, <clears throat> then we monitoring the job. 
by uh, plotting the injectivity uh, with time. So as we see here, this is uh, uh, at the beginning of the job, we have uh, 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 some uh, high injectivity. Uh, then with time, as acid reacts, the injectivity become, um, becomes uh, easy. So the pressure drop is, uh, is, is, is going down until we inject some uh, diverter. So we make uh, some apparent skin. So the pressure increased again. And when we deal uh, with another uh, zone, uh, so the pressure again is declined because acid reacts with the formation until we reach at the end of the job, uh, skin of uh, minus two. So from this graph, we can know uh, how, uh, how efficient our acid solution by observing the pressure current. And uh, we can also uh, know how effective our diversion. So if you, do, if you have uh, this pressure increase in, uh, in, uh, in the diverter stage, that means that uh, the diverter work well until uh, you monitor the final skin in, uh, in uh, the upper, in the treatment itself. <clears throat> and we emphasize uh, this scan by boost treatment evaluation. Uh, we make uh, a test flow after flow, and then we have a build up. Uh, so from uh, uh, from flow after flow, we we can see that the well uh, produced 500 barrel oil per day, natural flowing. And from the build up that we make, we find that the scan is uh, negative uh, 0.5 which means that uh, the acid treatment was uh, effective uh, to remove all the damage and uh, to introduce some uh, warm hole. And this is also reflected by the production itself. So thank you for uh, attending this presentation. Uh, and I hope